What if I said that you had a superpower? Yep, you heard that right. And everybody has it. But the question is, do you use it effectively? Here's a simple hack that will help you in a combative situation. Human beings have a natural tendency to adopt patterns of behavior. Common pattern behavior could be anything from scratching their nose, you know what I mean, looking away. So one of the things we often talk about on this channel is assessing threat cues, when this guy is likely to attack you. And in some sense, if you can start to develop a spidey sense, get a basic idea of what's going on or what's likely to happen, by simply keeping your eyes open, you'd be really surprised how much of an impact it will have in your self-defense game. Best fighters out there know how to spot patterns of behavior. In essence, what they do is identify the way that their opponent moves. Now, pattern recognition is nothing new. You see it in combat sports all the time. Experienced fighters are able to pick up patterns of movement. It's a complex skill, but it's based on their observation. In a typical combative situation, you can pick up patterns of attack. For example, someone might throw a jab and a cross followed by a hook. Very basic. But if this is thrown in repetition, it becomes a pattern of movement. And better yet, if it's coupled with other actions, maybe stepping to the side, stepping back, maybe lifting the glove up a little bit higher, it tends to give away a clear pattern of attack. So one way to spot patterns of behavior is very simple. You use a one, two, three rule. One is where you observe the behavior. You see what's happening and you make notes of it. Two is where you see it again, but, but this time you consider it a coincidence. But three, when it happens on the third occasion, is clearly a pattern of behavior. It's not coincidence, it's not by chance, and it didn't just happen. So armed with that skill, that means you can preempt your attacker. Now, of course, we're talking about long drawn out situations. Self-defense and fighting in the street is completely different to fighting in a gym or in the ring. I get that, but the same concept can be applied to self-defense. Basically, you're looking for patterns of behavior. And that means when you're observing people in the environment around you, whether they're likely to be a potential threat to you, is you're trying to observe whether they're repeating the same standard behavior again and again. So it may be the case that the bad guy looks at you from afar and then he looks away, then he looks at you again, then he looks away, then he looks at you for a third time. That's a very simplistic pattern of behavior. But then if you add in co-occurring behaviors such as adjusting their clothing, checking their surroundings or even putting things away, basically getting themselves ready, so then there's a good chance that you are a target for violence. Observational skills simply come down to looking for patterns of behavior and human beings are renowned for following very strict patterns of behavior. Understanding patterns of behavior is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it's good to recognize it, but then on the other hand, you need to break your own patterns of behavior. So if you find that you move in a very systemic way where you have clear patterns in your own movement, it's best to break that because then you become far more unpredictable, not only in your movement, in actually what you do. But most human beings not only move with a pattern of behavior, they also move with a rhythm. And rhythm is also something that can be broken and even used against the fighter. With good observation and timing, you'll notice that fighters tend to have the same rhythm of movement. So it's not just a physical pattern of actions or behaviors, but it's often a rhythm of movement that coincides with that. So this suggests that if you can tune into someone's rhythm and their patterns and behaviors, or patterns of behaviors, you'll be far more effective in your ability and you'll have a better impact when it comes to fighting and defending yourself. And it doesn't matter whether you're fighting in the street, in the ring, or in the gym, what you're learning is to develop a skill where you're observing what's happening around you. In a combative situation, understanding rhythm and behavioral patterns can make all the difference to your game. So what's the takeaway? Observation skills are the most important part of your game. One top skill to have to be a really good fighter whether on the street or in the ring or wherever it is, has to be your observation skills. Recognizing patterns of behavior. Be aware that when you're making assessments to the risk to you, you're looking for a wide context of actions and behaviors. Of course, good fighters 
are able to break patterns of behavior. If you're going to apply these skills in the context of a self-defense situation, the street that is, and one of the things you need to do is to take a simple overview of how people are behaving around you. And if you can see clear patterns of behavior, then maybe you should pay attention to what they're doing. And that can make all the difference to your self-defense ability. Understanding people's patterns of movement and even their rhythm of movement can make all the difference to your ability to fight back. Thanks for watching.